Yo, what's up, what's up? I'm Renz Davis. Welcome to another Renz Reactions. What's that? It's another Sunday. You know what this means, right? That means not one, but two. Combatants enter the fields of combat for Defend Fight Club. Let's get it on. That right there, raise energy. This one, voodoo. But don't stop there. There's also galaxy burst, sour gummy worms, one of my personal favorite, guava mango. With the refresh technology, what's refresh? I'll tell you what the fresh is. It's focus, recovery, energy, stamina, and hydration. Dang, what more can you ask from an energy drink? I know I can't. But you know, I digress. Enough chit chat about the energy drink. So, I am pleased to announce Aslantix is back in Defend Fight Club. Very thrilled about this because he's one of my top five fighters I like to watch from the com from the uh, fields in Germany. Very good fighter. He was actually the first fighter I did a reaction to. So that's awesome possum. Plus he's a karate practitioner as well as I am. So you know, might be a little biased. Big fan of karate people, just saying. He's taking on Haman, who is a Street Fighter wrestler type. Now, he's going to be a wild card, but there's one thing I've seen and noticed is the one other Street Fighter that's been in Defend Fight Club is, um, I can't remember his name, but there's only been one other one, and he has not done very well. He's made attempts, but he's not done very well. But maybe Haman is going to be the guy that breaks the mold. He's going to be the guy that comes in and... Wipes the slate clean for Street Fighters and kind of puts a good name for him. Who knows? I couldn't tell you. Prove me wrong, Haman. Prove me wrong. But I digress. Without further ado, let's commence. My name is Aslavdi Kurkaev. I come from Poland. Today my fight is against a very good uh, Street Fighter. And uh, he's heavier than me, about five kills. <clears throat> I'll do my best to finish him. If not, at least the shizzle. Mein Name ist Jonas Hamann, bin 29, komme ursprünglich aus Aschaffenburg, wohne seit drei Jahren in Now, he might have a weight advantage of 7 uh, kilograms, but it seems he's not going to be quite as tall as Atlantic's by 2 centimeters. Und ihn eventuell auch zu submission. It's his debut fight. Let's see where this goes from here. By the way, don't be afraid to like, subscribe, and share this video right here. It'd be appreciated. Helps me grow as a YouTuber, and I'm a small one at that. Want to become medium sized, if not larger than medium sized. Extra medium. Was geht ab? Heute geht Aslan gegen Jonas ab. Jonas gibt hier heute sein Debüt. Sein they look pretty ready to start throwing gloves, man. I tell you what. God, every time I see these Defend Fight Clubs, I see the fresh gear at the bottom of the screen, I think, man, maybe I should get myself one of those slick um, Defend Fight Club wolf shirts. I think I'm devilishly good looking for one, right? Leave a comment, tell me why I should. Cool, rules of the rounds. We got three three minute rounds. They're gonna be using eight ounce gloves. MMA rules, no knees to the head of a grounded fighter. Aslantic's really eager to get the fight going. Round one begins. First strike thrown by Haman with that roundhouse kick. Throws another one. Throw and a miss. Fakes the shoot for the takedown. Now it seems Haman is going much more forward. Very interesting striking style. Very one and done. And then he just drops his hands. Another round kick. Now hopefully Atlantix will try and time this for counter strikes. Another roundhouse kick thrown. Not really much hit. Aslan uh, in dem Sinne eigentlich uh, ein viel versierterer Stand-up-Fighter. Wundert mich, warum er die Kicks nicht countert. 
Ooh, nice kick to the body. Well played. Looks like he was angling for the side kick. Also for an axe kick. He shoots for the takedown. Sprawled, and now he's in a front headlock. Come on. Trying to... Ooh, he's getting some body shots in. Now those can add up. Maintaining that front headlock. Looks like he was about to try and throw a knee to the downed opponent. Atlantic's trying for a single leg, but he is thwarted. Put back into the position. Front headlock. And... It looks like he's trying to get an oil check in there. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Ooh, there we go. Atlantic's game himself the back clinch. And it doesn't seem that Haman wants to let go. He tries to throw an elbow to try and shake him off, and the completion of the takedown is there. Atlantic trying to get into the back mount now. And he gets it. What is he going to do now? That's a good question, Atlantic. <laughs> Now, if I was Atlantics, I would try and sprawl him out, try and flatten him out, and start ground and pounding him right there. He's keeping those hooks in as best as he can. Looks like he's trying to maintain that position. He's hanging on very well. Less than 40 seconds of work. It looks like he's trying to sneak his right arm under the chin to get a rear naked choke. He's definitely trying to finish this fight in the first round. He's almost... No, he lost it. Looks like Haman's trying to shake him off the right side. Trying to recover himself into the top of the guard position. Not much to do here other than just keep the defense up. And round one is over. Now it looked like it kind of looked like Kaman was bleeding from the left side of his head. That could have been dirt. I could be wrong. And as we see in this replay, a lot of kicks were thrown, not a lot of technique from Haman. It looked like he was not very comfortable throwing kicks, he might be very new to striking in general. So something he could definitely work on in the long haul is definitely throwing some technique into those kicks. Maybe not aiming so high, but maybe aiming more for leg kicks. Well, this is very interesting. I'm not seeing anyone cornering Atlantics. This could be kind of a very not so good thing for him. And it looks like Haman is cornered by Arthur Grass. I actually did a reaction to his video, to his fight last week, where he took on, I believe it was um, Kasim. Kasim the General. I could be wrong. Alright, looks like they're gearing up for round number two. I'm very interested to see where this goes. Alright, here we go. They tap gloves. Round two begins. Light kick attempt by Hama, um, Atlantics. Looks like he was going for that bicycle kick. Now it appears that, yeah, it appears that um, they're still in the feeling out process, but Haman is definitely pressuring forward. He definitely wants to keep himself moving forward, but if there's one thing I would tell Haman is keep your hands up, because at any moment there could be a counter strike coming right over as he drops those hands. But with that said, I think what Atlantics really needs to focus on is throwing volume. If Atlantics had a corner person, that's what I would be telling. That's what he should be telling him. Let the hands go. Start throwing those strikes. <laughs> oh, he got landed with a body shot and said, "What is that? You call that a kick?" And man, Haman is just spamming those body kicks. They're not even that good. Oh, that was a nice hook kick. Trying for that headlock. And they go down. Looks like Haman's trying to land into side control. But Atlantics is getting himself recovered into guard. 
Looks like he's trying for something. He's trying to push that arm over. He gets himself into an arm triangle position. Now as a submission, this is not a very high percentage finishing technique from this position. If he was on top, it'd be a different story. But from this position, it's a very good control to get to the back. And all those strikes that Haman is throwing aren't really hitting anything effective. Now if uh, Zlantix can get that left leg to sweep under and hook into the uh, coordinating leg, he could very well take the back. But it looks like Haman is not feeling that. He's trying to get him stranded guard, go straight up Mark Coleman, smashing style. He's definitely throwing in for the ground and pound, just trying to keep him down and throw whatever he can. Oh, that doesn't look very civilized. Now, I can't tell, but it looked like he was trying to do some kind of eye gouge for a second there. Now, 20 seconds of work. Oh, Atlantic's going for an arm bar. I don't know if he's going to land it. He's trying, and he gets dropped. Ooh, leg kick to the hamstring. That's not very nice. Less than five seconds of work. Haman is definitely taking the offensive. And, ugh, that is rough. That's a rough end to a rough round right there, I tell you what. Now, a big theme that I've been seeing in this fight for Haman is the spamming of leg, uh, the spamming of body kicks, and then the Mark Coleman style of ground and pound. I'm not sure what information he's getting. Oh, see, there we go. Now that didn't look like that didn't look like rabbit punches or any kind of like really short range strikes. Those look kind of like he was just shoving his hand right into the eyes. Not very cool, if you ask me. Those kicks, though, at the end to the hamstring, totally legal. Now, Atlantix, I'm afraid, is in a very lonely disposition right here. He doesn't have a corner, it appears. He doesn't have someone to bounce ideas off of or someone to guide him into the next round, which is a really upsetting position. I've been there myself where I was at a grappling tournament and I was just like rogue blue belt. You know, I didn't have anyone to tell me what to do or what I shouldn't do. But it looks like Haman is getting some decent information from a boxer right there. Or more specifically, a Muay Thai fighter. As Lantix does not look like he's very thrilled with this performance. Which is a damn shame because, you know, I can feel for him. It's a damn shame to be in that spot right there where you're down on the scorecard or you don't know what's going on because you don't have someone to tell you what's going on. Uh, looks like they're bringing it in for round number three. Alright, they're getting their distance. Round number three begins in two, one. There we go. Ah, Jonas will here. Will direkt wieder losgehen auf Aslan. As Lantix being backed up by Haman. Now what's really killing me is every every moment so far where Haman has been throwing strikes, he drops his hands. This would be prime sta prime time to start throwing those like counter strikes right over the hand, right over the shoulder. Wer kann, wenn er müde ist, sich zwingen, einfach härter, härter durchzubeißen und, und äh, die letzte Runde für sich zu entscheiden? Ooh, that was a decent sidekick. Haman's not having it, man. He's just going like, what up, bro? Ja, Jonas merkt das hier, dass Aslan sehr müde ist. Versucht ihn ein bisschen zu provozieren. Big Hat running haymaker-style punch misses, ja? though. Two minutes on the clock. Let's see where this goes from here. Try going for that spinning back elbow. And he's taken down, put into side control. And looks like Atlantics is getting himself into half guard. Very nice. 
Now as Landis needs to get that head control, get that right arm around his neck, try and keep him down. Although it looks like his left arm is snaked under his Haman's right leg. He's going for a deep half guard technique it looks like. He needs to protect his head though because when the top person is not held down and not posture broken, they can throw all sorts of nasty ground and pound, really bad stuff. Now, if I was Atlantics, I'd be trying to rope in for like a leg lock, and it looks like he might be angling for that. He might be trying to go for a knee bar right now. He's trying something. He's going for it, and... Ooh. Ah, see, that's the problem with going for leg locks from the deep half. You can start getting smashed and grabbed. Again, it looks like... Now, I don't want to accuse Haman of doing anything, but it looked like he was going for some nasty tactics with that hand. Like, it looked like he was trying to go for, like, an eye gouge or something for a moment there. I could be wrong. Leave it in the comments section if you're seeing the same dirty stuff that I'm seeing. Less than 30 seconds of work. Let's see where this goes. He's doing some forearm grinding, which isn't necessarily legal. It's when the fingers start going into sockets, into ears, into mouths. That becomes a problem for me. Fish hooks are not cool. 15 seconds of work. And it doesn't appear that Haman is trying to really progress the position forward. He's just trying to smash and push forward. And that's the fight. Dang. Now that. Whew, that was painful. I don't want to sound like I'm being biased or anything, but as a karate guy, seeing Atlantic get himself put in those positions, not have a corner person, I'm a little heated. Like, I'm a little heartbroken. Like, god damn. That was a nice spinning elbow, though. But on top of that, I felt I could be I could be seeing things that aren't there. Maybe it's just the case of boogeymen. They don't exist. But I feel like when I was watching this fight, I saw a few dirty tactics being done. But like I said, leave it in the comments section. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't think I am. Maybe I am, but I don't think so. But here we go. We're going to go to the scorecards, see who they give the victory to. Whew. Dang. That's good. Alright. Let's see what we got. Ah, they gave it to Haman. It was a hard-fought fight. I can't really see any reason not to give the fight to him. He did established dominant positions he was progressing and advancing the whole time but more importantly he came to fight and regardless of dirty tactics or anything he fought to win now uh, heartbroken i feel like atlantics kind of went into this fight a little bit unprepared now i am aware that he was supposed to fight someone else he was not intending to fight the German pit bull. He was intending to fight a different opponent altogether. Now, I don't know how much that had to factor into this fight, but here's two things that I think could have made a major difference in this fight. He needed to fight more like a matador, and he definitely needed to fight more with the principle of distance. He needed to use that karate style using lateral movements going side to side circling it felt like he just kept getting on the tracks haman was the train and he wasn't trying to get off the tracks to get away from the train he was just backing up and watching the train come at him real sh it's a real shame to have that happen but the good news is is not over i feel like this could be the beginning of a really cool you know situation where he gets a rematch he takes a victory and then it's a rubber match Hopefully, I really want to see a rematch. Not that I'm bitter, but hey, us karate people, we got to kind of stick together. I believe had Atlantics. Oh yeah, the second thing. Atlantics went into this fight without a corner. 
I'm I'm perplexed. I don't know what to think about this. Like seriously, wh- what happened? Like what what like I am literally flustered. That might be the title of this video. Ren's reactions. Ren's is pissed. Ren's is pissed. But anyway, he didn't go in with a corner and a corner can make all the difference in the world. Don't let Mike Perry fool you. You need a corner. You need a striking coach to kind of give you the idea of what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. What to do when you're feeling demoralized. They kind of give you the slap and tell you, hey, I'm going to throw the towel in if you don't pick it up. You want the win? You got to fight. But Atlantics, I think you could pull it together. I think you could definitely do some major like um, soul searching and get yourself back on track and kick some wicked butt. Yes, I know. I'm trying to keep it family friendly. Uh, hopefully I didn't curse too much, right? <laughs> but Atlantics, I honestly believe you can pull it together and you can take back this victory. I am personally calling for a rematch. I want you and this guy to fight number two. I mean, hey, I, I've already seen Defend Fight Club do one rematch in the entire circumstances with, um, what was it, David Grass and uh, Eslin Magomedev? So I don't see why they can't grant you a rematch. You're one of the people that I've seen on the promotion in the first place. You're a pretty well recognized name with them, so I don't see why not. Okay, now that I'm done venting, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but yes, thank you all for watching. To all my subscribers, thank you very much. You guys are the reason I do this. And to all the new viewers and all the viewers that I've been you know, catering to all along, thank you as well. You are also the reason I do this. Now, you know, it's a new year, new look, new everything. I'm a Rays ambassador now, which is awesome. Down below is going to be a link for rep uh, supplements. Basically, like, I basically do the Rays energy myself. There's not many of the supplements I do myself other than Rays. This stuff is pretty boss. If you like Bang, if you like Rain, this stuff will leave all the other cans in the dust. This one right here, boom, voodoo, good stuff. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for subscribing, liking, and sharing my content. It helps me grow a little bit more from being a small YouTube channel to a bigger YouTube channel. And for that, I gotta thank you all. So, until next time, travel safely and rock on, guys. And I'll leave a cold, restless air.